Welcome to our Rust programming tutorial. Today, we're tackling a question that many beginners encounter when learning this powerful language. Our viewer is curious about how to store a char's iterator within a struct that also contains a string. This is a common challenge, especially when dealing with lifetimes in Rust. Welcome back to another technical video. Today I'll be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully you find that solution that you need. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy like me, and hopefully you get to that resolution. Now, let's continue on. To store a char's iterator in the same struct as the string it is iterating on, we need to understand Rust's ownership and lifetimes. Let's start by defining our struct. The key here is that the char's iterator must have a lifetime that is tied to the string it is iterating over. We can achieve this by using a lifetime parameter in our struct definition. Next, we need to implement the next method. This method will return the next character from the buffer or read a new line from stdin if the buffer is empty. Finally, remember to handle the case where the input buffer is empty. After reading a new line, we reset the iterator to the beginning of the new line. With these steps, you can successfully store a char's iterator alongside a string in your struct, allowing you to read characters sequentially from stdin. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. To store a char's iterator with a string in Rust, you can use an integer byte index instead of the iterator itself. This allows you to create a string slice from the byte index and extract the next character. You can update the byte index by the number of bytes the character occupies using the char len UTF-8 method. This method helps manage character boundaries in UTF-8 encoding. However, this approach doesn't provide more safety than using an iterator. The validity of the byte index still depends on the input buffer not being modified. And that's it guys. We've gone through, answered your questions, and hopefully found that solution that you're looking for. If we did, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And until the next time you need technical help, I hope you have a good one.